Okay. So uh, hi everyone. So I am Francois Branciard. I working at iExec, and today I'm really pleased to present to you uh, what we experiment with a uh, substrate. Today I will present uh, two things. Um, first, I will present what we are doing with bridges. Uh, we have seen in the previous presentation that bridges are part of the ecosystem coming. And then I will present our first uh, proof of concept uh, with a substrate. So the title of this uh, presentation is um, How to build a domain-specific token-based chain. And I will not read the abstract because uh, it will spoil all my presentation. Okay, so the plan for this presentation, I will briefly introduce you the um, exec ecosystem. And I will put it into Web3 perspective. And then I will focus on um, showing what we are delivering today. Uh, we plan to release for next May uh, what we call Consortium Bridge. And I will uh, explain uh, what it's about. And then I will uh, present our uh, substrate POC we have uh, done for a few, few weeks now. So briefly, I will introduce the ecosystem, uh, exec ecosystem for those we don't do, didn't know. Um, we use blockchain for two things. The first thing, thing is to to create a marketplace. So the um, the blockchain is used to to seal deals between actors into the the, the, the blockchain. So when we say actors, there is three three main actors. The first one is uh, resource providers. So that means that uh, servers can monetize their resources. So this is uh, the first actors. And the, the other actors are application providers and also data set providers. So we, we see that all these actors can send orders between them to, to sell or buy their resources and then this, um, these deals are uh, sealed into the blockchain. And we can see that for the resource providers, we have worker pools and workers. So the network typology is like uh, you have minor pools and miners, and we, we have entity uh, that, yes. And worker pool with this typology can, um, can have quality of service or provide different kind of services of or resources. So this is the first part of the block. This is the first part, the marketplace. And then the blockchain is also used when the deal is uh, done. Uh, it's tr trigger execution of chain exe of chain compute. And so we have what we call the POCO. It's it's basically a bunch of transaction that proves, proves that the execution it's it's correct. And so you have a trust uh, of the result uh, thanks to this um, protocol. So it's an all overview of uh, the ecosystem. And to sum up, uh, in, with option compute, you can extend your DAP's cap cap capa capacity. And with um, on the top of that, we add in an economic game to preserve the, the trust of the result. And we use um, the blockchain to, to create this kind of marketplace for a data set application and server providers. So in a Web3 perspective, we, we are some uh, second layer protocol uh, focusing on heavy computation. And so this is an extract from the, the Web3 Web stack. So we, we um, deploy our smart contracts for our marketplace and proof of contribution on mainnet, but we also plan to, to allow, every, uh, allow others to deploy those smart contracts on, uh, on uh, their own chain. And it, this is what we, for the next release in May, we plan to, to propose for consortium to deploy this kind of uh, smart contract on their chain. And we deliver 
intermediary solution with existing technology. That means that we plan to, to have bridges uh, between uh, the mainnet and uh, POA chain to bridge assets and allow people to, to build their consortium. And, and I will explain this in, in uh, the next slides. So this is for the delivery part for our next release. And uh, in parallel, we have research uh, and we experiment uh, with a substrate and uh, the Polkadot ecosystem. And the idea is um, instead of using bridge under a proof of authority, uh, we, we can delegate this uh, relaying messaging between chain uh, to Polkadot, and Polkadot will, will have this own incentive to do this relay. So it's part of uh, our idea about that. And we also need uh, what has been presented in the, in the previous presentation, all these kind of uh, governance models and other, other things like that. So our ultimate goal is to, to have a, an autom autonomous chain with an own incentive and also all the governance parts that is uh, uh, in research, na research now. So this is the uh, two aspects I, I will uh, now present. So the first thing is consortium bridge. We start from the parity bridge and then we use the POA uh, network uh, to token bridge, so they introduce the, the possibility to to bridge ERC20 to ERC20. I don't know if you are familiar with bridge. M maybe I can explain in uh, one once one second. So a bridge, you have two contracts. You have a contract on the main um, the main net and a contract on the on your POI chain. And you can allow people to transfer assets in this contract. And some um, software watching the transaction from the main contract and create the assets on the other side of the bridge. And the other side, it's, it's your proof of authority chain. So there is no supply creation. You keep the, um, the supplies of your as asset, but you, you can uh, bridge your, your value on the other on the other chain, and so you can think like deposit, and then you can also withdraw and coming back to the main net. So it's about the basic overview of what a bridge can do. But we needed also for consortium to to do not support everybody coming in their um, chain because because as you cannot. Uh, uh, block somebody to transfer token. We introduce um, a feature uh, proposal to, to have a white list of people that can cross the bridge. And so we currently contribute on adding this new feature to, to the POI network uh, bridge. So I will illustrate what kind of use case it can uh, uh, do. So imagine, let's build a consortium. You, you have application verticals. Um, you have a company that um, can be the data provider. They have data that can be trained to, that can be used to train models. And you have another company that uh, have application. And uh, the third company can have, um, for instance, idle uh, resources of a uh, GPU. And for instance, it's when proof of work will be story, maybe there is other uh, GPU that can be used for other, the other ta tasks. So each company can represent an authority and they can join together to, to automate uh, their business. So this is the first uh, case they can automate uh, the, the, their business and each uh, providers will deploy the um, data set, application, or worker pool. It's like uh, their reference, they deploy their reference for their resources. And uh, they gain the shared auditability of uh, the usage between them. And that means that uh, at the end of the month, they can, say, they can say 
they can see what uh, usage they have to pay each other. So this is the, thir the first level, um, building this uh, POA without bridge. And we will see that we can add other levels of uh, features. So when you introduce, you can introduce a bridge under the, the, the same authority. And th this can automate token payment between them. So each, each time I'm, one authority can deposit and withdraw, uh, and then all the auditability and transaction uh, are in the PO in their own chain. And uh, the, the cool feature that is uh, um, they can uh, add the dynamic prices for their resources. So we, this is uh, the second level we can add come feature. And then they, they also ha can have a joint customers. That means that uh, if the formula is like this, if this uh, user or customer trusts this authority and uh, like uh, the efficiency of the services provided by, th by those uh, company, and if this authority whitelist the user, the, the user is able to, to, to use his asset in, into the, the home chain of the POA. So this is the kind of use case we, we see useful for, um, for consortium. And so what's happen if you are not whitelisted in to cross the bridge? So there is a, like a sonic loop that uh, as we cannot uh, block tr uh, transfer, uh, RC20 transfer, in fact, the bridge have to, to, to reform the, the user. So um, the, the, the asset is given back to the user. And uh, today in bridge, you, you can add also um, fees, fees uh, con smart contract. So that means that uh, here, uh, only fees will uh, will be removed from the from the transfer. So uh, it was for the um, bridge part of what we are currently working on, and now I will present you uh, what we experiment with substrate. So the idea is uh, we 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 start with the substrate template node modules. It's, it's like a m minimal uh, blockchain with uh, some basic uh, modules. And we, add, we try to add custom modules on it. And we focusing on uh, the, con the proof of contribution part when we, we modelize task and contribution for off-chain compute. And it is uh, economic game incentive part of uh, or, uh, or platforms. Our objective was to familiarize ourselves with uh, WASM and uh, the next technology to come, and also uh, see the difference between uh, working with smart contract and uh, run times. And also all uh, the governance module we need today for something like um, if you have a domain, domain chain, the block production policy, upgradability, and all this kind of governance that need to be solved. So this is another graphic from the stack, and you will see that the POC only cover the the contribution part of the all the stack. So I will briefly introduce the contribution reveal sch schema to understand uh, later what the POC is about. So if you have an off-chain task, uh, the, the workers have to do two, two, two calls. The first call is uh, what we call contributes. That means when you contribute, you have to stake. And for the contribution, you have to only two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is your result votes. Uh, that means that uh, at some point, many workers will come and vote, and at the end, there will be a consensus of the vote of the result. 
So this is the first part, the, the vote on the contribution. But the, this vote is somewhat hidden. So this is what you, the second parameter is contribution seal. And this contribution seal will be used later uh, to, to, for the reveal phase. So every worker contributes. And at some point, there is a consensus. And that means that all workers are inv invited to reveal. And at this time, they only provide one parameter, what we call contribution unsealed. And when they reveal, they get reward or slash, slash according to their uh, valid or uh, wrong contribution to achieve this uh, option uh, task. So the next slide is uh, it's the same thing, but uh, just uh, just uh, look at the colors. Um, you see that uh, when you vote, there is two levels, and when so the contribution is is sealed, and when you reveal, you basically reveal uh, one part of uh, the previous level, and in fact the runtime or the smart contract. Uh, the, yeah. And the runtime or the smart contract check that the result vote was valid and also the contribution seal was valid. And then, so after that, they can trigger payment to reward the uh, uh, actors, like uh, workers. No. So it was just an introduction of our uh, um, economic game on for the offshore compute. And so we try to modelize this uh, this uh, economic game and uh, and uh, code into Substrate. Uh, today we we have developed this into smart contract, and we, we wanted to see what the difference uh, between smart contract and uh, r writing this kind of code in a Substrate runtimes. So Substrates come with uh, some basic modules. So you have uh, what uh, basic module of blockchain like uh, balances, consensus systems. And of course, you can uh, customize it, but also you can add new modules for your own logic. And here, I introduce a new module, iExec module, into the runtime. So you can uh, define your uh, mod models, some models. Don't here, I only um, describe the task and contribution, so simple uh, uh, modelization. And in the contribution, you see the two parameters I have talked about, the vote and the um, and this result seal. Um, when you have a runtime, you also define a storage. Um, basically, here is a, a mapping of uh, all the tasks and all contribution into the runtime storage. And like uh, in smart contract, you have function you can call. Here you define your, your functions that can be called uh, by, uh, by wallets. And here is, uh, there is a function to create task definition and then to contribute on those tasks and to reveal on those, those tasks. Um, there is a substrate uh, interface that allows you to quickly test your uh, new runtime. So you, you run your blockchain and then you connect your interface to this uh, runtime and you see that in the console you can access the runtime, then your module and then all storage or uh, function of uh, this module. So here I create an interface for creating tasks and then interface to, to contribute and reveal. So the contribution, you need the task ID to, on which you want to contribute and the two parameters we have seen, the vote and the seal of your contribution. When you contribute, you stake and contribute. And when you reveal, you will reveal your one parameters and you get reward if you are part of the consensus. So we create accounts. Uh, scheduler is like the manager of a worker pool. 
And we also create a worker's identity, worker one, worker two. So the, in the reality, the replication is, uh, is more complex than uh, only one number. The, this is a, a, there is reputation and a score. Uh, but here I simplify the, the replication. So I cr when you create task, you you ask to the number of replication you want to achieve for the consensus, and then we can see that the, the task is created, and no contribution has been uh, received yet. So th there is no task consensus. After that, workers contribute on those, this task. They have the they have the same vote, so the, we will reach the consensus of the ocean task, and the, the sealed part, the last parameters, is different for each worker. So the consensus is reached, uh, the task consensus is uh, revealed, and that means that all workers uh, can have incentive to reveal to get reward. And uh, the workers uh, re reveal, and so at the end, as he is, he is part of the consensus, he gets rewarded. So basically, it's what we experiment, and it was quite uh, easy to to implement new logic and new with a substrate. So I think it's a really great tools to to quickly. Uh, bootstrap some uh, some some chain logic and yeah and uh, I will uh, I will finish on speculative idea with uh, what we can do f f further so I see that uh, in fact you can build a specific logic and for the chain and at some point you you will have also uh, different performance needed between uh, use case or security or, or governance will be different. So it, it can be easily customized for each use case. And, but at some point you, you want to have interoperability between, the, between your, your, your domains. And it's where I think Polkadot is a, a, a key part that uh, allows this uh, cross-chain uh, mes message passing. And you can imagine that uh, if you have a domain-specific chain like iExec that do off-chain compute with this uh, optimized chain for doing that, like uh, we have seen with task replication, uh, own game incentive for off-chain task. And uh, on the op other part, there is Another domain like uh, donation, we can imagine that uh, Givet or Alice are, uh, are, uh, have all are, have uh, different uh, security models and different logic to do. For instance, they, they, they raise money, they have milestone, and this is a different topic. But at, on, at some point, if we, if we, if we can bridge uh, the, uh, them together, um, we can create this, uh, uh, what we call, we can call DCO, this donate computation offering. That means that when you, you will do a donation into Givet uh, or Alice uh, domain chain, you want to be sure that your donation is used to compute this kind of, of application only. And you can track that your don donation is well uh, well used. So uh, to do that, we can do bridge between um, one solutions to doing bridge between the two parallel chain or two chain. But uh, if you have an external actor like uh, the government, and you have to have task deduction because you have done this donation, maybe the government do not trust this parallel chain. Maybe. The, because of the, the security is not as uh, high of uh, other chain. And if it does not, do not trust both uh, parachain, it will do not trust the bridge between them. And maybe it will be okay if you have a proof in this Polkadot relay chain that is a third party 
and you can imagine that you you will uh, prove into the three lead chain uh, some non -re reusable proof like that you have done the donation and then the government uh, will be okay to to give you tax deduction so it it was a speculative idea but but to introduce uh, what what uh, interoperability can can enable So I will finish with this slide. So we, we see in the substrate roadmap that uh, off-chain compute is a topic uh, arriving. So we were really happy to, to see this uh, off-chain topic uh, coming. And we see that we are, we are, for the economic game, we are working on a proof of contribution and for for organized group of uh, executive, executive tasks, we have uh, this uh, worker pool uh, uh, network typology. So I start with substrate meta exec and I will finish with exec meta substrate. And we really happy to have this uh, common vision and synergy bit on this topic. So uh, yes, thank you for your attention. If you have any question.